working once again for Iron Maiden and this actual project was created for a company called Hangman. We work from their creative images from their albums and also we work from Hangman's CAD drawings and this really the CAD drawings are to show how the thing was going to move and how they wanted it to break down into pieces. This particular one was going to be lifted up by hydraulics from the head and so when it does lift up it comes together and joins together in the centre. Certain aspects of the design we wanted to make sure we got absolutely right so it looked like the real McCoy on the stage. So to work, here I am using the familiar 8 foot by 4 foot by 2 foot blocks of polystyrene. Working in the studio I just block it up as full as I can just to get a sense of the scale and the full effect of the whole thing. Here I am showing you the drawings of the scribe head and I'm laying it out in skin form on the floor and within the relationship of the foot block squares I'm actually sketching it out so I can get a real sense of the eye a sense of Eddie himself so I can start to work on the carving. When I've got the peripheral of the polystyrene cut out um, I try and work it on the floor level so I'm nice and safe um, and then I can take off the majority of the slices of the blocks itself before we start to work on the carving uh, with wire brushes. Because of the nature of the work and also the timing involved I normally call in another sculptor to give me a hand with the polystyrene carving and we work in unison together to block it out, lift it all up and scratch it down and then tighten the form as we go along. I love creating things in polystyrene and this is really fantastic for me to, um, to work on another Eddie head, a real pleasure. Here we are just blocking the whole thing up. Um, we're working on individual pieces so we're not getting in each other's way and it's, it's coming together nicely. Not all aspects of the project goes exactly smooth and as well as you plan it. Um, and this is me just trying to create a disc and I wanted this beautiful tooled effect. into the um, early hours of the mornings. Um, basically, this is a Friday night and I want to get this pattern and mold done by Monday. Um, bit of a risk. I'm not sure whether it's actually going to work or not. Um, my machine broke down so I couldn't turn an actual pattern um, as accurate as I wanted. So I decided to create this female mold so I can lay in the fiberglasses afterwards and cut out a process. Um, then when I found out, I thought I had four bags of fine casting plaster and I only had one and it was a Friday evening and I couldn't go and get some more so what I've actually got is sand and cement mix and making up this kind of crumbly fondue mix and I've sort of carved it out and now I'm just spraying it and hopefully by Monday morning it's all gone off and, uh, and the mould has worked so fingers crossed on this one if it doesn't work it's all I have to go back to the drawing board and, and work late again bit of a risk but um, I had to get this done today in order to keep on target so here we go the weekend's come and gone and we're laying up the actual female part of the mould now itself and we're laying it up now and uh, we've put a double gel coat on the mould and now we're going with three layers of two ounce glass and hopefully the mould comes out nice and the cast comes out even better. Yeah, the mould just fell off lovely and there was a few little lumps and bumps and discrepancies within the fondue kind of plaster mix and here we have the cast out and we're also going to trim the edge of the peripheral of the disc off and then we're going to work up the surface in a double formation one from one direction and then once again from another direction 
so we have a perfect form and then paint it and go over it again several times. We had to um, keep to the eddy um, images as accurate as we could as well as making it um, practical to use and make it safe to handle within the dark and when it's on the stage and here we are putting in the final touches of the actual carving in the polystyrene stage. As normal we would invite the client down um, to the studio to actually see the carving before we go ahead with the fiberglass and here we have one of the clients from Hangman and we're actually discussing measurements and the metalwork and how it's all going to be transported and how it assembles together. So it's important they can uh, come down and oversee the project from their perspective and to make sure we know exactly what we're doing as well. Yeah, really good to see them. Once we have the um, polystyrene side of it signed off, we know where the brakes are, it splits down the centre, including the disc, and now we're preparing the polystyrene to actually be glass fibred. Um, and here we are just preparing each and every surface and making sure it's pin brick free so no resin can get through the foil lot onto the polystyrene, otherwise it will eat it away. As normal, each process goes through a um, several stages during its metamorphosis as such. It goes through design, to drawing, to carving, to foiling, to fiberglass, uh, finishing and sanding and then painting and artworking which is a real pleasure. And each and every one of the stages is a real milestone. Uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to get exactly where we want to be. On the Eddie head itself, they actually wanted the eyes to be done in sort of clear resin. So we've done the eyes first in a kind of Tentex and clear resin base. So when there's a light source inside the head, the eyes can glow and sort of um, pulse. But the rest of the head has to be solid so no light comes through. Now because of on stage, they actually want to add a lot of uh, metal works and hydraulics to the inside of Eddie. Um, so we actually took time and um, scrapped all the polystyrene from the internal uh, and cleaned off as much as we could so they can then bolt the new metalwork onto our fiberglass internal. Once it's fiberglassed and all the polystyrene is taken out we start to offer the pieces up again because what we find is the fiberglass has its, um, its own inherent um, strengths and weaknesses so we make sure that it all goes together exactly as we carved it and then we can redo the flanges and make sure it's perfect. When it comes to the painting I use professional skilled people such as Duncan Bayliss here who's freelance and I've used him several um, times to be passed on many of my projects and he actually builds up loads of wash colours and, and, and creates a nice theatrical effect. Thank you very much Duncan. When it comes to the disc, which was finished in fiberglass with a beautiful finish, we wanted to make sure it had this sort of globe effect, so we had it airbrushed painted, and this is another painter um, named Paul Carslake who did the work for us. When it actually come down to the scenic painting, we, although we wanted to look nice close up, we also had to make sure that it registered from 40 foot on stage. So things had to be quite theatrical and bold. Um, and I believe it read really, really well, along with the disc, which uh, was really quite slick. So a nice balance all round. The actual glow part itself, we put several lacquers on the top and we, um, we flattened it back and we put some more lacquer on top to give it that beautiful globe orb effect. And here it is mostly put together. Um, still some work to do in it, but we'll actually get some shots of it on stage as well. I'd like to thank Hangman for giving Sculpture Studios the opportunity of creating this piece. I hope that the Iron Maiden fans get a real buzz out of this as well. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you for all my wonderful staff for working incredibly hard and also my freelance people who come and give me a hand from time to time. Thank you very much. <laughs>